Montenegro Podgorica. Uh, before we started, uh, we just want to put some uh, house rules for this session. So we kindly ask you to turn off your microphones during all presentations. If you have any kind of the questions or the comment, please write into the chat book or in the comments via Facebook or YouTube comments. Uh, also, this will be all recorded. So if you don't want to be recorded, please turn off your camera before we are, before we are uh, starting. Uh, um, so I think, uh, could you, uh, Drisha, please share the screen. So, Susanna is back. Uh, yes, Susanna, yes. just have a, a short introduction uh, about the house rules. So you could please uh, continue with the, the announcement of our session. Okay, uh, sorry, I have a little, I have a little uh, connection. Uh, problem, but good morning, afternoon, or night to everyone. My name is Susana Delgado. I'm, young, I'm a young environmental activist and a student of environmental, environmental technology engineer. And it's an honor to welcome you to the second international conference and pop festival for youth-led youth action. In this session, we will be talking about the role of youth in implementing green ecosystem solutions. So, uh, as my colleague said, Giovanna, if you want to start with a, a bit of the talk of what are we, what have we been working on, and the projects that we have developed. Okay, can you just please go back on my slide? Uh, so it was a bit easier for participants to follow. So like I told, uh, I'm coming from the University of Donja Gorica. A few years ago, with the great help of Professor Pachauri, we established the Center for the Climate Change, Natural Resources in Energy, uh, with the aim of conducing the research from the different fields who are related to the sustainable development. Uh, I'm personally an environmental economist, and the project that I chose for today uh, is something that fits in, uh, in this topic. Uh, during last year, we developed an educational program for the civil servants of ecosystem uh, services. And the main uh, project objective of uh, this, uh, of this um, activity was to increase awareness and capacities, capacities of integrating the ecosystem services and their relation into planning process. Uh, target group, group is not just the civil servants, even if we think that we need to, to have support and understanding for governmental institutions related to this topic, so we could include it in planning. Uh, but also we de developed the curriculum, uh, who is uh, now presented at the University of Donja Gorica on postgraduate studies, and it's related to ecosystem services also as an uh, evaluation um, of them. Uh, what was the idea? The idea was that this is not just topic from the people who are coming for the uh, biodiversity background or it's not protected area or conservation. This is the wider topic who are, need to include uh, all different uh, fields so we can have a protected and healthy um, ecosystem. Project is related for the regional scope, so the all countries uh, of the Western Balkan, but now um, I mean, the positive thing I can say that from the COVID is that, that despite of this curriculum ecosystem, we also developed the online capacity building program, who is now available for uh, people who are interested in, in this topic all around the world. So I will just shortly announce that the video course, uh, which will be published in the following days, it will be cover uh, five, uh, five modules. So ecology of ecosystem services, ecosystem services concept background, uh, ESA and the mainstreaming. Uh, so this will be the five part course who are leading by out top, uh, top researchers, where you can uh, learn uh, like a different um, different uh, parts of the of the uh, of this uh, this field second one was the real time uh, webinar which co cover all these main uh, topics uh, which is also recorded so when we will publish it uh, it will be available for for all of you i think this is the good uh, point start so even if you are new in this area or you are, you are an advanced researcher, I, uh, the idea is also to make connection and the, the bigger and stronger network so we can uh, protect 
our ecosystems. Here I've just given briefly our uh, social network accounts, so you can uh, check the, the news and videos uh, when they will be published. Thank you. Thank you so much, Giovanna. Uh, Trisha, if you could go one slide further. Just one. <laughs> the mic. Okay. Uh, have I told that I'm a student of environmental technology engineer? Well, I have two little projects. One is a stand drive an orchard. This is an orchard that is, um, ha we have already the installations, but they have been neglected a little bit. So uh, the idea is to give them back to the students, the power to, so they can grow their own fruits, vegetables. And the outputs of these are the teamwork to clean and repair the greenhouse and a garden workshop course for the students online that I have already started with a small group of Red Cross youth um, and youth. <laughs> And the other project is a lifestyle of permaculture and airship. This is more an initiative for people to know a different way of living and inspired by that. So to be inspired by that. So the outputs, outputs here are real uh, general, It'll be like changes on fellow minds, but I have seen these changes. I have been proud of these changes. So I will be still be I will be still uh, developing will talk you about permaculture and the tip community so everyone can be uh, able to see that are other ways of living. Levi, you can take the floor. Okay, you, you, you can move to the next slide, uh, yes. Grisha. Okay, so I'm um, Levi Nilenda, I am from Zambia. Uh, I'm, in, I'm, I'm a regional focal point for East and Southern Africa, UNMGCY. So I'm also taking a lead to, uh, I'm also leading a project uh, titled Ecosystem Preservation and Restoration through my various activities. And uh, uh, with this project, uh, we gather different youths from different regions, uh, of, uh, especially in East and Southern Africa. So uh, the idea is uh, to bring different activities and uh, that which will help us to solve uh, the problems of degradation. So uh, we believe that a multifaceted uh, ecosystem it requires multifarious activities for it to, to, be, to, be, to be restored. So that's what we are doing and we are trying by all means to make sure that all many young people, different groups, they are engaged with uh, different activities different uh, expertise and um, as we come together and solve this problem together so and so that no one is going to feel that they are left out so that's just uh, the objective where we are promoting good uh, uh, practices uh, that may help to protect our planet and identify and restore any degradation also to improve productivity of the ecosystem to meet the needs of the society and uh, the output is just to inform and also because it's uh, the one of the uh, project where we consult and also inform people, we update them. So just beside, I think you can see this side, there's a picture that uh, this is one of the posters that we, we've been using when we are uh, doing our consultation programs. So we've used this picture on social media and uh, when we work with different organizations. Thank you. I think you can just pick <laughs> it up. On the, yes. I think that's what I can say about the project. So, uh, Susanna, I think you can you can pick it up. Okay. Uh, having introduced ourselves, I'd like to present our keynote speaker. He's, uh, His Excellency Dr. Lawrence Gonsi, former Prime Minister of Malta, uh, former Prime Minister for for five years to from 2004, 2008 to 2008, 2013. Lawrence Gonsi led Malta during its first nine years as a member of the European Union, transforming the island nation into a modern and dynamic European country. During his membership, Dr. Gonti retained the finance portfolio while guiding Malta through an economic restructuring process ahead of Malta's adoption of an euro in January 2008. In his second term, he successfully steered the economy 
during the most severe global economic crisis from 2007 to 2013, with a political career spanning in 25 years. Dr. Gansi occupied several positions before becoming Prime Minister during Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Social Policy, and a Speaker for the House of Representatives. Dr. Well, His Excellency Lawrence Gonsi, it's an honor to have you here with us. Thank you, Susanna. A warm welcome, Your Excellency. Thank you so, so much, Susanna, for, for starting us off. And I just wanted to convey my deepest gratitude to His Excellency for his uh, invaluable time and, and support. It's, uh, it means so very much to us, Your Excellency. Thank you. Um, we're very excited, Your Excellency, to have um, a few minutes to speak with you and very importantly to hear you um, share with us as we talk about um, ecosystem solutions and particularly the role of young people in uh, addressing the many challenges that exist. We'd love to receive your thoughts, Your Excellency, on what you believe some important issues and solutions around blue and green ecosystems are today. Okay, so thank you very much, Ash. It's a pleasure to join the whole group. I am uh, happy to salute in particular the friends that I had met when we met in Durango in Mexico. Um, oh, so many things have happened since then. When we were in Durango, there was little or no talk at all about COVID-19. But when I returned back to Malta uh, a few days later, suddenly the problem of COVID-19 hit us all. Um, so a special greeting, however, to all those of you whom who I had met directly or indirectly in Durango, but also a special greeting to all the young, um, young people who are joining us for this session. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. You are touching on a very important topic. Um, uh, this is about, the, about the, the future of our planet. This is about the, the, the future of ourselves. It's actually the future, your future rather than mine. I am a little bit more advanced in, in years than you are. Uh, so it, it's in my interest to make sure that my quality of life today is safeguarded, but it's similarly, it's even more important to make sure that this quality of life for your future, for the future of my children and grandchildren is guaranteed. Now, perhaps without, without going into a lot of details, I, you need to understand exactly where I come from. I, I, I was born and lived in a small island in the middle of the Mediterranean. It's a very tiny island, but it's, it's a nation, it's a state, and we are a full member of the European Union. So we sit down around the table at the European Union and we, we speak out and we vote and we, are, we have a very strong voice around that table. I am very proud of the fact that the European Union has become very much sensitive to the ecosystems, to climate change, to the challenges, etc. But I need to explain to you as well that for me, uh, the issue of, of, of ecosystems and the issue of sustainability is of major importance. You must understand that Malta is an island. We are surrounded by the sea. It's a tiny island. We have about a population of about 500,000 people, okay, half a million, living on an island which is approximately 316 square kilometers. So, so very, very small. Just to give you an idea what we're talking about here. If you take uh, the number of people per square kilometer in Malta, living on the island, you have 1,282 people per square kilometer. Just for you to understand, in the rest of Europe, the whole of Europe, per square kilometer, you have, you have 116. So whereas in the rest of Europe, 116 people live in every square kilometer in Malta, it's 1,282. We are amongst the highest in population density. Also, just to give you a, a, a better picture, if I were to take India, for example, according to a research I have just carried out earlier on today, in India, 420 people live in every square kilometer, on average, of course, okay? We're taking the national average, 420. Compare that to 1,282 people living on an island, that has no water, no water at all. If it rains, the island is in a way that most of the water runs back into the sea. We have a major issue uh, with regard to, to, to how do you handle the, the, the drainage system? 
How do you handle the environment, the cleanliness, etc.? So how do you sustain an economy of that sort? Why am I pointing out this to you? Because you need to understand that perhaps Malta is an ideal uh, test case. Okay, for you young people who possibly want to exercise a little bit more of, of academic research in the challenges of an eco, a sustainable ecosystem, perhaps Malta is the ideal case. Small island, no resources, major population density. How can you create a quality of life for uh, uh, people living in this environment that is sustainable? Now, the answer is you can. If you are prepared to make uh, sacrifices, take some tough decisions, um, probably lose popularity with, the, <laughs> for me, for a politician who depends on the votes of people, you know, that is very important, but you sometimes need to take a decision to, to, um, to which, which is not popular. But let me, let me go straight to the point. For example, most of your countries, I'm sure, depend on tourism as a source of your economy, for sure. Most countries today uh, depend very much on tourism. To have a valid, sustainable, successful tourism industry, you need to provide good quality services. Amongst them, the provision of water. Now, in a country like ours where water is, is not sufficient, what have we had to do in recent years? Uh, we have had to invest in reverse osmosis plants that uh, change seawater into drinking water. Okay, we are surrounded by seawater. Uh, it's a blessing. We, we, need, we, we, we change that into drinking water, which is essential for the quality of life of our citizens, but also for tourism, for manufacturing, for, for everything. Is it doable? Yes. What's the problem with it? It's the, 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 the amount of energy, of electricity that you need to generate in order to translate seawater into drinking water. So how do you address that um, with, uh, with an, a sustainable solution? Well, you have to persuade your population, your people, to go for alternative energy, to insert, um, to install um, solar panels wherever possible, to install solar heating systems wherever possible, in which case the demand for energy would go down because you're using natural resources. Now, in my experience, uh, the section of our population that really understood this at, at immediately were our young people. And when I say young people, um, I mean, I'm starting from children of age five, uh, even possibly six year olds, right up to the younger generation who understood very clearly the concept of generating electricity in a clean manner using saving electricity wherever possible etc um, that that implies a lot more of, 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 of decisions but it is just one example there are there are a hundred other examples okay which we have undertaken in on the island with our young people for example the 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 initiative to encourage every single uh, young young man and one young woman to plant a tree one tree but also not just plant it and then abandon it, but also take care of the tree, water it over a period of time, make sure to visit it every so often in an open space. And suddenly we started seeing a little bit more um, how sensitivity to the environment and the younger generation started to understand this, how important it is. Um, so, so this is another concrete example on, on really small steps, little steps, Get, that can actually change uh, the quality of life and the environment and make uh, the, the issue of green energy and blue energy. M mind you, uh, blue environment. Uh, I must add an, one other point, and I don't want to go on and on, Ash. I know you need to ask questions, etc. so I, I do not intend to make a, a long speech at all. Sure. But, but just one point. Please. You know, <clears throat> COVID-19 has brought terrible tragedies all over the world, okay? But you know, in every cloud, there is one silver lining uh, here and there. Um, one thing which we noticed on, on our island, surrounding by the sea, we had not seen dolphins swimming in our seas for long years, long, long years. Well, since COVID in these past six months, seven months, with the sudden 
uh, slowdown of sea transport surrounding the island, suddenly we have started to see the, the life in, in, in around our seas regaining lost ground. You know, and all of us, all of us, the young ones and the older ones started to realize that after all, this is a man-made problem, that nature, we are not allowing nature to take its normal course uh, and to find a way how to uh, coexist with the natural and nature around us and take care of it and, and, and protect the biodiversity and yet maintain our quality of life. Um, so, so basically, this is my, my, my take on this particular issue, extremely important. Um, but starting from a very young age, let us invest in our younger children, let us, uh, let us invest in our younger population, on our youth, and, and, and allow them to take the initiative and move forward. Of course, there's a lot more to say about this, but that, perhaps that answers a little bit your first question. Absolutely, it does indeed, and, and I really appreciate it because you know um, I, I know that we have some some young people in the room here, but we have several who are watching on social media and um, are very interested to hear your perspective because this whole issue of blue and green ecosystems and the engagement of young people is critical. Um, and and oftentimes, you know, uh, it, not only just young people, they don't people don't understand. Uh, what the significance uh, in terms of blue and green economies, uh, ecosystems is, and what the linkages are. Uh, a lot of people are not able to find those linkages and, and don't quite understand that we're, we're on a blue planet and uh, you know what happens in one corner of the planet affects uh, the oceans, no matter which way you look at it. And so I really, really appreciate the example that you gave us of Malta. And I think if we can make models of... Uh, of uh, countries, for example, in Mal Malta, we, you know, where many places that we that can learn from those examples and models. Then, yeah, yeah, there's there's so many <clears throat> so much more <clears throat> that one can yes. say because um, I I would I would invite you as well to consider the impact of plastics on our quality of life and plastic yes. when you're talking about the blue economy and therefore the level of plastic and microplastics that are found in our blue seas the impact of the plastic on, on, on the fishing industry and the impact of that then on the quality of food we find on our tables, which if, 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 that, if that worsens, that impacts not only our health and our quality of life, but it undermines our economy. Again, if you have an economy that depends very much on your tourism and your tourists visiting your country, if, you get, if, 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 if that goes wrong, then suddenly the, the economic consequence is, is, is fantastic. Uh, Giovanna, if I am not mistaken, a, a, um, described herself as an environmentalist economist. She will certainly understand how the domino effect all of, all, of all of this is tremendous. Yes. And sometimes it starts with a little thing, you know, yeah. a, a little bit of plastic, but that little bit of plastic suddenly you realize is, is yeah. impacting everything around us and, and endangering, literally endangering even our, our structured economies. Quite right. Absolutely. And Giovanna is in Montenegro, so she will appreciate that very, very much, but all of us should. And, um, and I don't know with the volume of PPE that's being uh, generated as a consequence of this pandemic, uh, mm -hmm. which we found now on the deep or, or seabeds is a, is a very, very scary proposition. I, I, I uh, wondered, Your Excellency, what's your perspective regarding um, the engagement of youth and particularly uh, the role of youth in tackling these challenges, uh, uh, you know, should should ideally be um, okay. in terms of being able to promote uh, the ecosystem and its sustainability. I think this is perhaps the most important question that one can put to oneself. Um, and and coming uh, myself uh, as a politician, I have lived three quarters of my life um, in politics wearing different hats, different positions, starting from a minor role, ending up as prime minister of my country for about nine years. Um, I am extremely worried by the fact that uh, uh, our younger generation, not just our younger, but, but especially our younger generation, have lost faith completely in politics and in politicians. And when I exchange ideas with, with some young people, even here in Malta, 
and I speak to them about our local government, our local councils, our parliament, our politicians, etc., and try to encourage them to, you know, to use politics as an important tool to bring change. Um, I, I face skepticism, um, negativity, and uh, sort of surrendering to the fact that there's nothing we can do about it. Now, the best way I can answer your question, of course, again, there are a hundred different ways of answering your question. How can young people, you know, really do bring change around us? But myself, I can tell you that the most powerful tool that brings change to a society is politics. Because it puts you in the chair where decisions are being taken. It places you at the very heart of where decisions are being taken. Do you want to influence your government, your country in the choices as to whether in 10 years time, 20 years time, we should remove all cars that are driven by petrol and diesel and go to electric cars? Well, you need to go and sit down around the table. You need to make a difference at that level. Now, you, 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 there's no need for you to be elected in a parliament as a young person to make the change, but at least go and vote. At least go and choose the right people who you think can make that difference and put your trust in them. So my, my, my first answer to your question in concrete terms, in really concrete terms, make sure that you participate in the political exercise to choose the right people that are then placed in the decision-making positions. And that's not just about your national parliament. It's about your local government as well. It's about your local council as well. It's about your governors there. If you choose the right people, change can actually happen. Um, and and, and you, can, you can bring that change yourself. Of course, it's not just that. I'll, I'll, I'll invite you to consider another point. A lot depends on the careers you young people will be choosing. Now, of course, you can choose to go to choose the easy way out and go for the normal careers. And I don't know, I don't want to mention any career because I'm sure there will be people who will feel a little bit, um, you know, angry that I mentioned their career as the normal, cho obvious chosen one. Everybody wants to do that particular job. But hang on. If we have architects who are able to design uh, this, the, 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 the buildings, the the way a building is designed in an environmentally friendly eco system that is sustainable, then we have the perfect architect who will make a good choice between you know, choosing how to make money quickly as against how to create a work of art that is sustainable and gives a good quality of life. So an architect um, it, it could make a major choice, but not just that, you know, so many other things. Yeah. Even an environmentalist economist can make a big change uh, with the type of studies that are um, being taken, taken care of. Then there is the third, the third dimension, in my opinion. So it's not just politics. It's not just your careers as young people. You are, you are at the stage where in your life you are about to make major decisions for your future. Those decisions will impact not just your future, but also the future of your town, your city, and your country. Um, but there is, of course, the, 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 the third dimension, and that is your activism, your presence in the, in the pop move, movement, your presence on, the, on social media, your presence uh, is speaking out when things are wrong, you point out that they are wrong, but when things are right, you encourage people and you say that those things are the right way to do. So your voice around, um, um, in the social media circle is extremely powerful. And by the way, whereas 10, 15 years ago, uh, the politicians didn't really take any notice of social media. Today, politicians read social media before they open their daily newspapers, okay? And if, if they realize that social media is moving in a particular direction, you'll get everyone following that line. It's a sort of, how shall I say, political TikTok, okay? Um, <laughs> if, if, if you get everybody dancing on TikTok, then everybody starts to like that dance and everybody dances. Well, in social media and in environmental uh, issues, you start you start the, the 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 trend. You know, you can you can push that trend, and uh, you know, from a practical point of view, in today's world with the digital economy and the digital uh, quality of life, this is of uh, extreme importance. 
So I think those three dimensions are the most important, at least from my point of view. Absolutely, Your Excellency, and thank you so much for sharing that, and particularly uh, the importance of uh, the communication via social media, because we know at a time when misinformation and fake news has taken over the world, it's so important to get credible information out to the public. Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for your fantastic uh, and extremely valuable perspective. Uh, we have a few questions, I think, uh, from some of the young people, and I don't know if anybody's dropped anything in chat, but if you have questions, please, uh, please do share them. Uh, uh, well, if I can uh, please. just Giovanna. give the brief please. comment. Uh, yes, Your Excellency, please. thank you for this uh, great uh, speech and the message that you sent. Uh, I am totally um, agree with you, with everything that you uh, said. Uh, like, uh, you know, people from the nature doesn't like economists at all. <laughs> so I think that maybe uh, the, the, the best way of, uh, we actually we need to find a way to, for the better communication. Um, my personal research always go in, uh, in the direction that we got uh, the data, which will be understood also by the academic sector, uh, as well as the political sector. So even if we are all running away from economists that we are all hating because the capital is bad, uh, now and the numbers are the, the one message that everyone understands. So if we can say that we are losing like 60% of ecosystem services uh, in following 10 years, this is the signal which is uh, applied to, to everyone. Um, also, when I speak about uh, the, the role maybe of academic sector, it, it could be the catalyzer between the, the young people or the people who are not uh, uh, so into the knowledge of the protection of the nature and between the politicians because we, not, we need to find the, the, this uh, like a bridge to understand each other and then to have the, the common goal uh, in the future. Uh, also, even if the pandemic is awful and scary and uh, the, everything has changed, uh, I, I see also the positive, uh, positive um, uh, way forward, if I can say that, because the, the social network doing now the, the great job that everything is visible. So you can hide be, 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 beside your actions and your, that you don't understand something and how you infect the other people. Now it's everything open to everyone, even if the, the, the conventional media don't want to, to present that. So that also could be a good tool for, com for communication because I really don't want to think that someone has like bad manners. Uh, regarding to the protection of the nature, I, I, I personally think and feel that people just don't understand the consequence of what they're doing. And like you said, the, the, the smile, any kind of smile, the change is like a butterfly effect, even in the social, uh, it, even if it's social or economic, or like we say now that this health crisis make, I mean, our world ups and down. So thank you once more for your message. I think it is also important and coming from the field of the, the uh, that they are sent actually from the field of politics uh, because they make impact on others uh, much greater than when they come from an academic sector. Uh, right. And I hope that we can change it. Thank you once more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Giovanna and, and Your Excellency Susanna. Did you uh, have a question? Yeah. Let me go ahead, please. Yes, thank you very much, Your Excellency. That was uh, so deep and powerful. We've learned a lot from you. It was it was awesome. I've uh, heard a lot of things just uh, just for a short a short time, but yeah, you 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 are able to explain a lot of things about the ecosystem. It's true. We uh, I think we are we are not aware about the blue and the green ecosystems. I think uh, this is what we want, especially we young people. So uh, I wanted to find out from uh, Your Excellency, uh, especially in uh, developing countries like where we are coming from. So we are talking about the role, the, the, the role of the youths in uh, implementing the ecosystem solutions. So uh, especially like I've moved around a lot where we are doing uh, many different consultations. So you find that uh, youths, they are showing that they are willing to do this work, but uh, they are saying there's no motivation, no support from the government and uh, different. I think they, are, they don't feel like they are being supported. 
So I don't know what can you, what words can you tell them? How can you encourage such people who are saying that maybe we don't have, we are not employed and we don't do anything, then we can't just move around. We have ideas, but uh, we are, we feel like we are not supported when we try to do something. I don't know what, what can you say, Your Excellency, for that? Yes, yes, Levi, I think this is a, a very important point. It's a very realistic one. Um, in, in, in several instances, uh, initiatives that are pro, uh, that are in favor of the environment will not necessarily find the support of people in government or people who are business people or whatever. I mean, the reality, we are surrounded in, in today's world, but perhaps it's, it's human nature. We are continuously surrounded by people who want to make a lot of money quickly, even if, the, even if making money means that you're ruining the environment around you even if making money means that you are putting in danger the future of, uh, of, of your country, of, of your city, of your town. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's a mentality, I think, that has generated in recent years where uh, people are just after the quick profit without looking at the consequences or examining the consequences. But this is something that should not discourage uh, either yourself, Levy, or, or anyone else. You know, it's a, constant, it's a constant battle. Let's look at the positive side, okay? I mean, we can be negative about this. We can, we can always say what is wrong, what the difficulties are, that it's, we don't have the support, etc. But let's look at the positive side. The reality is that in, 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 in 2020, there is a, a higher awareness around the world about our environment. There is more consciousness of how important it is for this planet to be saved. Um, it is true that we still find politicians and, and people who are skeptical about climate change. But science seems to be gaining ground. And uh, it seems that now uh, a larger group of people are understanding that the science is showing that, 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 the, that we need to do something quickly because otherwise the, the climate, the impact of climate change is going to be uh, a disaster for all of us. Um, so uh, I would add to that, that whereas 20 years ago, perhaps even less than 20 years ago, social media did not exist. There was no way somebody without a voice, like, like, like most young people and most you know, voluntary organizations, 20 years ago was so difficult for them to, to, to get their voice heard on television, on national television, on national radio, or to, to be strong voice on printed media. Well, that was 20 years ago. Nowadays, that has changed. Today, you, your organization, your group of people, your friends, can immediately now, five minutes after we switch off, you can go on your social media, you can speak out, you can make your voice heard. Now, whether people will listen to you, well, eventually, with a wave of pressure growing up using social media, people will start to look at, to, to listen to you very, very carefully. So, so I, would, I would be rather optimistic. I do realize that there are obstacles, that there are issues that discourage you a lot. Uh, when I say you, not just yourself, I mean, this, is, this happens in my country as well. Huh? This happens in my country as well. You know? but, but, but eventually, uh, our environmental organizations, our young people, our activists, our, our people who, are, who, are, who have understood the enormous importance of this challenge, when they spoke out, and, and, and things started to change. I, I explained to you earlier on that in Malta, because we have such a high population density, you know, we have a major challenge because everybody wants to build his or her own house onto this little piece of land. You know, and, and it's always a tug of war between Two young people who are engaged and they're going to get married, they want to have their own property, they want to build their own house. But the island doesn't have enough land space uh, to, to, to satisfy this demand. And if we're not careful, we are going to end up with an island that doesn't have open spaces, doesn't have greenery, doesn't have areas where people can meet and, and have a healthy um, exchange of, 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 of quality of life, etc. 
So it's a constant tug of war. But finally, all of us realize that although there is this demand on our natural environment, we have to find a sustainable way forward. And the sustainable way forward is to have proper design of buildings at a very early stage. And that's, that is where politics comes in, architects come in, designers come in, your sustainable ec economists come in, etc. It's a whole complex, complex of situations. Bottom line, my answer to your question is, don't let anything stop you. Don't let anything discourage you. You see, um, it's a good cause. <laughs> you know, it's a good cause. It's a good cause to fight for. It's a good cause to stand up for. And even if you find people who will disagree with you, eventually you will understand that what you're talking about will be appreciated by the vast majority of people out there. So don't get discouraged, just continue. Eventually change will happen. Thank you. Thank you for that very powerful and inspirational message, uh, Your Excellency. And I think that what we take away is that we all have a role to play in and nothing should stop us. We need to amplify our voices and engage at many levels um, and, and make that different. So I, I really appreciate your, your time and your incredible wisdom and, and uh, the support that you've given all the young people. I think all of us are, are left feeling extremely inspired and, and motivated to do more. And um, thank you ever so much, Your Excellency. Most grateful to you. It's my pleasure, it's my pleasure. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Your yes, Excellency. Uh, it's great to hear all of this uh, coming from a politician because living in Mexico, it's really, really difficult to still believe in the politics. And uh, I know it's not just my experience. I know in uh, so many countries, it's it's really difficult for you to to still be uh, activist in the political climate action. So thank you for all your words of, of action. It's really uh, great to hear that. We, we can really change it. It's, it's our future. It's our youth who will be in the politics, in the major politics uh, seats one day. So why can't we change it? So I will pass uh, the, the floor to our to Giovanna to start with uh, the presentation of uh, all the research we have done. Uh, I'd like to tell you that this is part of a big and bigger uh, action plan. Uh, it's not just a survey that was made for this session. It's a, it's a project that has been working on from the conclave to this day. So Giovanna, please introduce us. Thank you, Susanna. Uh, so it was my great pleasure to, to introduce to all of you the work that we conduced in a few past months. Um, the idea was to make assessment, uh, knowledge assessment, assessment about uh, climate change and eco ecosystem between uh, students uh, as well as uh, community uh, initiatives. So the information which are collected through this survey uh, are coming from the, the United States, Mexico, all around the, the Europe. And we made analysis uh, of, the, of the results uh, that, we, that we gain. Uh, as uh, Susanna told to you, this is not just a short-term research that we, that we make. We just want to, to hear uh, what are the problems, also how the, the young people, also in communities, find the solution, fighting uh, uh, against the climate change and the restoration of the, of the ecosystem. So the, the main objective of this uh, research was, like I said, knowledge assessment of the community and the young people, so we can understand what is their uh, perspective on, on, on these uh, topics and uh, what we are trying to get and we, what we will present today is the strong policy uh, recommendation so what they see that they, uh, that they what they want to, to see in their communities uh, also the, one of the main uh, message that we got was the creating awareness to the general public related to, to this topic. Uh, as we are discussing about the uh, uh, structure of the participants, 
uh, uh, also, I mean, that was uh, what we expect, that the, the main the group of the participant uh, was the students, but also, like you see, we have here presented representative of the community, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, education, volunteers, uh, and others. And as we go throughout the questions, we will give you the perspective of the different groups uh, regarding this topic. Susanna, you can. Thank you, Jumana. Uh, as I told, this is the survey. This is why we did it. And as you have seen in the past uh, slide, you have see you can see that the most uh, people here or the people that help us with the survey are students, are community people, and then workers of the educational ambit. So this is very important. Uh, environmental education. If you can go one slide further, thank you. Environmental education. Well, the Cambridge Dictionary describes it as a process of giving students and the public the knowledge they need to protect our environment. So environmental education is not just uh, teaching everyone that they have to turn the lights off when they go out of a room, that they don't have to waste so much water when they are bathing. It's uh, really giving all the knowledge needed so people can take action uh, to protect the environment. So environmental education is a process that allows individuals to explore environmental issues, engage in problem solving, and take action to improve the environment. As a result, uh, individuals develop a deeper understanding of environmental issues and have the skills to make informed and responsible so the, the principal components of environmental education are awareness and sensitivity, knowledge and understanding, attitudes of concern, skills to identify and help resolve environmental challenges, and participation. Participation is a key part of environmental to lead to a resolution of environmental challenges. While environmental education is utilized in a variety of disciplines, including ge geography, biology, chemistry, and more. It's not limited to the science. I'm um, uh, studying an environmental technology engineer, but it's not just uh, my career that is going to protect the environment. If not everyone in their different ways of, well, in the different careers, start to protect the planet, why are you studying? Why are you trying to make a career out of something that you don't have a future on? Because it's it could sound rude and it sounds rude, but it's really the environmental challenges that you have to accomplish when you're working, and not just as students, but when you enter to a working place, you you have to see that everything you do has an impact on the environment, and I, I don't want to as uh, show fingers but if you're working on commercial if you're working on uh trans well in the in the way that everything in the in our planet is connected the this a uh, really big way of commerce that it's making the industries go crazy with all our supplements and all our uh, economic well environmental value, you have to see that there is no much future then, or you will be really, really affecting the future of our children, because our future is already in danger. So it's not, well, environmental education is not about advocacy for a particular viewpoint or course of actions. Rather, environmental education teaches individuals how to weight various sides of the issue through critical thinking, and it enhances their own problem solving and decision making skills. Environmental education ensures balance and fact based, well, balance and fact based information, and practitioners strive to examine both sides of issue in search solutions. So, uh, if you go to the next slide. Uh, this is a prototype of environmental education curriculum for the middle school. This is a program that has been on, well, has been there 
from since 1994. And this uh, environmental education curriculum was provided by UNESCO and UNEP and the International Environmental Education Program. All of, well, the goals that we that we see here are, are five goals. None of them have been achieved since 1994. And this is really important because it's, it's it literally gives everyone the product, well, the the curriculum that they have to follow, and none of the countries have followed them. Uh, I think like Norway and Finland are the only ones, but we know Finland and Norway are the gods of environmental protection. So the goal levels are ecological foundations, issue awareness, investigation and evaluation, and issue resolution skills. So these. Uh, goals are given to middle school middle schoolers and uh, so they can study the environmental projects well the environmental actions that they have to take and this includes uh, some major objectives that are reviving economic growth we're talking about middle school environmental education but we have to also talk about the bigger impact that these will have that this will have Reviving the economic growth, specifically in develop, developing countries, making economic growth less energy intensive, meeting the essential needs of an expanding population in the developing world, ensuring a sustainable and stabilized population level, and conserving and enhancing the resource, resource base, and rearranging technology and man, man, managing risk, and merging environmental and economic concerns in decision making because we cannot have money that's dependent on trees if we don't have trees so these levels of these goal levels are uh, subsequent to the unit so in ecological foundations the the students will visit a local stable ec ecosystem and and see the and see what is contribute what this ecosystem is contributing to to the nature of humans and 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 the world so the issue awareness will be following a unit on men's cultural activities and the environmental applications because it's not just a uh, economic and industrial activities that will uh, destroy a world but also some cultural activities that are damaging in a lower level after this is an investigation and evaluation. It's um, using a secondary sources that the students will draw an issue from a set issues prepared from a container to a local, at least six publishes reference dealing with the issue. So this is about getting rid of fake news of environmental action and really putting our, our kids to research in the good places, not just Wikipedia, of uh, what is going on, what is really environmental, what are really the environmental issues. And then you have the issue resolution skills. So, so students completing instruction and environmental action will be able to write a suitable definition of consumerism and cite at least two current sites that could possibly be influenced by the mode of action. So this is, uh, we're talking about kids kids citing this important uh, news, kids uh, searching for issue solving, and we have to not just plan it like, this is your homework and you have to do it, because people don't work like that, kids don't work like that. Kids wanna see everyone, everything like it's a fun game, that it's something that they can really do, because if you give a kid something that they can never achieve, why are you trying to prove? So these uh, goal levels are really, really good for all the middle school on and higher levels of education. We were talking about middle school because shaping a young kid mind is the best thing you do. It's for the future of the world. So it's not about changing the our father's mind because they are not gonna change. So we have to start from the basis from our little children that have seen uh, dead birds in the pathway and dead fish in the sea. We have to show them that that's not the answer and that's not normal. So normalizing this issue awareness and investigation awareness 
he'll drive us to a better, better place. And I'm talking about the the answers that you give gave us about environmental education. Is it enough? Is it good? All of you said no, uh, or at least they said like yes, but it could be better. And and we know it because none of the goals have been achieved. So if we really, really focus on teaching our sons, our uh, nephews about the environmental action, they will say, yeah, I can do that. I can plant a tree. And and they will be really, really inspired. So I will pass to Giovanna and to the next slide so she can talk about this environmental action. Um, so this is the uh, part of the levy. So could you, Levy, please uh, introduce us to this part of the of the questionnaire? Okay, thank you very much. And uh, that was deep. That was uh, powerful from, from Suzanne and Joanna. These people they are just from explaining about the survey. So this is uh, the knowledge assessment surveys so the idea was just to make sure the level how people uh, the, the knowledge of people on uh, ecosystem if people they understand what ecosystems are and uh, what do they think about ecosystem so we tried to get uh, many participants from all over many participants from all over the world so different parts of the world so this is just a uh, uh, the knowledge assessment uh, and these are the results. So I'm going to present these results from the participants, people who are just participating and to see what they know about the ecosystems because you can't tell people to change what they don't know. So they said the first element of change is uh, awareness. So are they aware? Do they know what it means? So uh, as uh, Joanna, she just, uh, Joanna explained about the Category. So we had uh, students and also people from who are representing the communities and uh, just to to know to know them better. So uh, these are the results. So about uh, 80, 87 percent people they are saying they know what ecosystem are, and um, 65 they 6.5 they don't know what ecosystems are, and also 6.5 percent they they are not sure. So they just said maybe they, they are not sure if they know what ecosystems are or what ecosystems are not. So out of the total number of the participants, about 70% uh, of the both uh, students and communities, they managed to list at least something, to list something about the ecosystems, the ecosystems they know. So from there, we could see that at least somebody is doing something. So even from the people, uh, so you can calculate from 71 to 87. It means there's a gap there. So even those who said yes, they were unable also to list something during the survey. So you you can even see if yourself, maybe people they may even say yes, I know what it is, but uh, they are not sure what it really, what they really, what, what ecosystems are. So uh, even the people who said no, uh, I I thought maybe to be one of people who are from the communities, but also they were students. Who oh, student representatives who say they don't know what ecosystems are. So it doesn't mean that uh, maybe if you are a student, then you you know everything to say, no, these are the what. So some people they don't know. So the representatives uh, from both students and the communities, uh, they say it, they, I, I could see people who say it, no. So about 85% uh, of people, what I can say is uh, they lack the basic knowledge, despite them knowing what ecosystems are. They could list the ecosystems. So here we are just saying that maybe it's possible people may even Google these things during when they were handling the survey. It's very much possible. They can just bring them down. So uh, the listing itself, it was it appeared that uh, people could just mix them. They don't know the categories of the ecosystem as uh, uh, His Excellency uh, uh, Lawrence, uh, he even mentioned it to say people they don't know what the the linkage even of the blue and the green ecosystem. So uh, people they lack. I, I, I could see that that uh, people they don't know maybe they lack the basic knowledge of uh, the ecosystem. So uh, maybe you can go to the next slide. Then. Go to the next. Yes. So uh, then after that, people were were asked to say, is it possible? but that you can, the, the ecosystem can be restored back. So uh, 
about uh, 90 percent they said yes they can the, the ecosystem the, the ecosystems they know be restored back and others they say no i think they are not sure they are among the people who are not sure if you can restore back the ecosystem when it's a uh, the degraded uh, ecosystem so uh, the people who said yes they are also they've given some innovative ideas on how they can how the ecosystems could be restored so you can just go to the next slide i, I just want to go direct to the points people they they are the respondents have been giving so they've given us uh, many different ideas to say we can do this and that's just to help restore the ecosystem. So about 32% uh, talked about promoting tree planting programs to be a global program which will be associated with cleaning programs. So here people they were saying yeah, we should introduce a tree planting program in every country, every area, uh, a, everywhere you have to make sure that people they start planting trees so uh, and also you should also understand the type of the ecosystem we are talking about when we talk about uh, planting trees so it means it's uh, the issue of uh, deforestation and also afforestation and also most of them they also talked about uh, cleaning up programs where we are going to clean the environment pick up the trash even also clean our uh, our rivers and also our streams, we make sure that they are clean. Then 65% uh, said nature is recovering with time. That's what they said. But our duty is to stop, uh, to stop, uh, to stop, uh, we, we make sure that uh, we, are not, we are not destroying it. So this is our duty. We stop ex the exploitation of the ecosystem. So everything, then they believe, people they are saying that uh, with time, you can leave the place, you can leave everything, but with time, nature will start recovering. That's what 65.5% uh, 6 said uh, of uh, the respondent. Then 9.7% uh, they say the government and the international organization to engage into an education and awareness program to make our communities to make our, our communities to be informed uh, on the importance of the health ecosystem. So they are saying that uh, we should make sure that uh, the, the communities are informed, the communities are aware. So we engage, uh, uh, if it's the government, international organizations, to make sure that they engage many different communities with uh, an education and awareness program where you make them aware, that's the first thing. Then uh, we can go to the next slide. Yes, so uh, here is, is uh, I've just mentioned some, some names here. It's not that uh, if your name is not mentioned, it's not that you didn't say. I think most of the point is, is that you belong to that category. Uh, you belong to where a lot of people have said you've been saying the same thing. Um, so I've just tried just to mention some few names here uh, with people who are also giving these uh, innovative ideas, innovative, they are suggesting to say this can really, really help us. So uh, I have Nicholas here and Jane. They said the community must be actively involved in the process of restoration, being a police making process or any activity. So uh, we have to make sure that if we're going to restore, uh, if we are planning to go and restore maybe the ecosystem of a certain community, we have to make sure that that community, people who are living around that place, they are involved, they are actively involved. They are the ones who are taking a lead. They are the ones who are taking charge. They are the ones who are leading a program and also so that they, they may feel they are part of the program. So this is what uh, Nicholas uh, Nirenda and Jane uh, suggested to say, if we are going to do that, then that it will help us restore the ecosystem because people who are nearby, they'll, be, they'll also understand what is happening. And like people, they are coming from different region. They are going to restore uh, the ecosystem of a certain region where you just do something, maybe you just plant trees, then no one is taking care of those trees. The communities, they're just watching, they don't know what is happening, that it will not help us. Then uh, Noriega, uh, Noriega suggested that uh, application of biotechnological measures in the, re in the restoration process, that it will help us if uh, we are going to apply biotechnological uh, measures. Then also KM, Masterman said, uh, this is Kelvin, I, I saw his question also in the chat, I think he's, he's here. So Kelvin also said it depends on the location and also the type of the degradation of the ecosystem, I think we, yeah, which may require a type of innovation 
a type of innov innovative solution to be used in the restoration process. So uh, Kelvin also was saying that uh, it depends on the place. So we have to understand, that's what I was saying, that everyone should understand the type of the ecosystem as we are talking about these things. Because if we lack this knowledge, then we also, we are going to talk about planting trees. Are we going to plant trees on, on water? Are we going to plant trees on water? So we, it depends with the, the place. That's what uh, Kelvin also is saying, that we should also understand the location and what is affecting that place and uh, what is affecting that region and also what is causing that degradation. So if we are going to understand that, then we have its own type of innovative solution that we are going to use. We're going to apply and that it will help us to restore back our they also the developers suggested the following program they said we should engage into different programs where these programs they'll help us to restore back our ecosystem so they said uh, we should uh, the the program like changing the hydrological channel uh, reintroducing wildlife and uh, use of renewable and waste recycle management and beach green green up monitoring monitoring the use of water setting up recycle bins at projects using plastics and garbage so we come up with different projects so th these activities which have been suggested by samuel and uh, Jane, uh they are they, they are saying that if we are going to engage into these programs pro activities where uh people they are doing these things it, it means these will help us restore back our ecosystem which is just like uh the project i've, I've introduced to say as we are uh, is restoring the ecosystem through multiple activities. So we believe that uh, different activities, and also they were also talking about different activities. If we're going to engage into different activities, which will help us restore uh, back our ecosystem. So as you can as you, as you can see, these activities they are from they are also representing different places, water and also uh, terrestrial and uh, aquatic ecosystems. So that's what they are suggesting to say. These uh, activities will help us. Then uh, Fragoso talked about a pine tree planting program. Uh, she, she, she said this, 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 uh, this program is, uh, is, uh, is right, uh, taking place right now in, uh, in Mexico, near her place where she stayed. So she was saying that uh, she would love to expand this to some public schools in her, commu in her country, in Mexico, with a goal of uh, informing children. So the, there is a program which is already taking place. I think uh, this is where also the youths, uh, they are also showing uh, the community, they are also showing the willingness to say they want to take part. Because uh, so what she was saying here is uh, there's a program, she, she saw the program and also the importance of that program and also what uh, the community can benefit from that program. So the idea is uh, she really want to take it uh, to expand, to, ex uh, to expand this program uh, into different schools where uh, pupils, they are students, they are, they are informed about the importance of this program so that wherever they go, people, it will, it will expand, it will, be, it, will, it will turn into uh, maybe a national program instead of just of only uh, for, for that uh, specific uh, place where they plant uh, pine trees. So uh, this is Fragoso, she was saying that uh, she's, she's willing. I think it's the issue of uh, support also, that if uh, maybe she can receive support, then uh, she should be, should be readily available to pick up uh, and to move with uh, this program and, uh, and uh, do something. I think uh, that's why we can go back to Susanna as uh, she continues. Um, okay, then I will follow uh, with the, the uh, questions that, uh, that are left. So we just want to know what is the opinion of the participants about the existing policies on environmental issues. Are they enough to support the process of addressing them? And as you suppose, uh, the, the most of participants said that uh, they are not. Uh, so we ask uh, what are their proposals, um, how we can um, achieve uh, to solve the environmental problems in the region that they are coming from. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, I choose uh, the, the maybe three main message that we got uh, uh, throughout the answers. One is rising, rising awareness of the general public, then put more um, effects on the circular economy. And the third one is action uh, taken by the states. 
So the rising awareness is the uh, message that the I mean think that all of participant uh, highlight highlights. So this is the, the so the idea is that uh, people are actually uh, not so familiar uh, with the, the everyday activities which are they conducing and they can maybe uh, make some kind of the problems in this in this sector. Uh, it is not just enough to speak what is the the the, the policy that we are using. It's uh, it's need to be much more grounder, so ordinary people, or people who are not coming from this field, can um, understand why it's important to to protect the, the nature and ecosystems. So uh, circular economy, this is something which is uh, now uh, quite popular and a lot of people are, are talking of, but still uh, it also uh, the, the messages were the same like when a rise, rising awareness, we need to make it um, useful, uh, useful for, the, for the people. So uh, speak about the waste, speak about the plastic, how people um, actually uh, use it, how they can do uh, the, the um, how they can actually be aware what are they done when they use the plastics, uh, how they can avoid it or how can they change it regarding the, the budget and finance uh, that um, that they had. We have uh, here some kind of, of uh, direct actions we can use. So promote the TV programs regarding the environmental issues and the project, uh, maybe creating 24 environmental uh, news uh, where we will speak uh, about, about this uh, topic and it will be more approachable to the general public. And last one is the action taken by the uh, state. Uh, so idea is that even if uh, if there is a group of people uh, who are uh, who are trying to, to make solution for this uh, problem, uh, it will be much more effective if we have support of the state and that um, like uh, we heard about in the beginning of this session, have understanding from the politicians why this is important and that today uh, that all of us uh, will get, have. Um, better situation and uh, uh, feel uh, and everything will be better uh, if we find the right way and the balance between um, economy and the use of uh, use of stressors. We also can do that throughout uh, uh, educational uh, programs, so throughout the, the high schools, faculties, or even like Susanna said, speaking with uh, young children uh, in the child uh, I mean, in the age of the fifth uh, to fifth to seven uh, years, uh, but trying to somehow change their opinion uh, about uh, what is actually happening around us regarding to to this topic. And um, the second one, uh, second one uh, was um, if uh, they if the they doing uh, our participant doing something uh, to uh, restore ecosystem. Uh, and we are so happy to, to see that uh, almost 70% uh, give the positive answer. So that means that the, the, the action that they are conducing are going in a good way. Uh, also, I just want to say that we need to have on the mind that this is the most the student population. So this is something that we can uh, uh, that we know that maybe the students and the younger groups are more the active in this area. So please, the, the, the next uh, slide, if you can uh, go on. Um, uh, so we uh, also ask, of course, what are the kind of, uh, of activity that you are uh, conducing? And we get the different answers. So in the following slide, I uh, just uh, pick the one that I think are most interesting in sending the message that this is not important are you doing some huge project or costly project. Uh, it's uh, our everyday activities that can uh, they can make change regarding to the uh, restoration of the ecosystem. So like you see, um, people are I mean doing different things from cleaning of the beach to 
uh, or just planting the trees, not the huge number of the trees, it's something that they're doing just for the neighbors or community. Also for me, it was very uh, interesting, this project that uh, uh, school conducts actually uh, helping with the family kids while they're in quarantine. So it's not that we just have threatened uh, uh, by the, the human action, now we have uh, ongoing huge health crisis uh, which changed the perspective of, of our lives. So having also this small, uh, small uh, projects uh, making uh, closer to the people. So even if you are in your home, uh, closed, I mean, frightening for your family, there is also the way how you can uh, contribute um, to restoring of the, of the ecosystems. Uh, also, I just want to promote uh, one initiative uh, which you can uh, see here, like it's called Lobeck. Uh, so you can uh, go to the Instagram and follow them. Uh, they they are like small um, community who are collecting the talents, uh, not just to the, the, the in this area, the different kind of the talents and the sectors and fields who can uh, jointly give the, the better uh, better answer in record, according to the, the ecosystem uh, restoration. Also, like I told you, there is no such a big project and costly project. Uh, for me, it was personally uh, so interesting to hear that people can uh, feel the change for themselves. So going, like example, uh, through this uh, interesting project on the climate change where they get uh, more knowledge, uh, how they can fight um, with all of these, uh, these uh, problems. Um, so uh, maybe we can send that message from this part of the of the uh, questions that it, it isn't uh, important if you don't doing some uh, huge program uh, programs or the projects or making the change uh, every even the small step uh, is big in this area. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ivana. Well, I will talk about a little bit of question of how uh, this makes you feel. Oh. Okay, <laughs> uh, how the environmental news makes you feel. It's really an impact on, it's, it's really difficult because when you're an activist, you are really, really tired of hearing uh, that everything is going uh, really bad. So if you get empowered by this uh, feeling of, of not accomplishing anything because uh, everything keeps uh, tumbling down, well, uh, as Pita told us yesterday, you can take a day to feel bad for yourself. You can take a day to really cry out everything. And the next day you have to shower. The next day you have to wake up early in the morning and really uh, uh, make an action. Uh, it, as Giovanna said, every small step is a really, really big step. And if you stop with yourself, with your family, with your com with your community, uh, you will really see the impact then. So if you can go to the next one, climate activism is about speaking every day for the rights of our planet, because uh, it's not just uh, oh we're living here we we have to take care of it. If we don't have if we don't take care of it we are going to really see the consequences. So uh, every small action counts. So just to finish, um, I'd like to introduce Eric Solheim. He is founder of uh, his Founder World Resources Institute in the Washington and former executive director of UNEP. He had a uh, really beautiful conversation with Dr. Ash. And uh, here is a little video. He can be with us in person virtually. So he uh, may had a, meaning, a meaningful conversation with Dr. Ash. If Drisha could play the video. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I just want to say a big thank you to you for, uh, you know, making this. We have no audio, Trisha.
just want to say a big thank you to you for uh, you know making the time for this session as well. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love to get your thoughts on a few things which I think will be very inspirational to the youth. I thought I'd give you a little bit of a backdrop. Drop. So please, over please the, do. The, the, the young people, uh, and we have several young people from around the world, have been involved in um, initiative which has been focused on mobilizing young people in different parts of the world to take action on ecosystem solutions. And these are green mm -hmm. solutions, blue solutions, looking at you know the range, the gamut of ecosystem problems and challenges and how youth can be engaged in devising solutions and then implementing solutions. And so this session has been designed by them and um, will discuss these issues in particular. So I was wondering, Eric, if I could ask your opinion on what you think might be uh, most relevant as far as action led by youth on ecosystem issues. But before that, I, I thought I'll ask you what you see as the most pressing ecosystem challenges that we face today. I think uh, the, the, uh, the most pressing uh, ecosystem issue is very simple. We are, we are losing nature. Uh, Mother Earth is so beautiful. Everyone should think of uh, the nature in your country or in your home place. You will, you will always remember amazing beauty. And we are using species, we are using trees, we are using nature. And these must stop. And basically, we know how to stop it. Yes. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I, I really appreciate that. And I think that that's one of the key driving forces. A lot of the youth are seeing issues uh, relevant to the ecosystem in, in a state of severe destruction and, and depletion and desecration. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was wondering, uh, Eric, what- I can go with, give, sure, give more examples if you wish. Yeah. Please, yes, yeah, sure. The destruction of nature, because it's most visible when it comes to the species we care the most for. In my country, Norway, uh, the polar bear is severely threatened up in the north. Why is that? Because of climate change. Polar bear can only live in ice. If there is no ice, there is no polar bear because we cannot hunt seals anywhere but in the ice. But you, if you take this around the globe, in Africa, you have seen a huge uh, decline in the number of elephants and many other species uh, because of um, uh, people doing poaching or because of the loss of habitat. Uh, in India, you also see positive developments because the number of tigers is slowly going up. There's been a huge decre decrease in tiger population over 100 years, but now the tide is turning. Nepal, as the first nation in the world, has doubled the number of tigers. And India is also increasing. And adding is increasing in Bangladesh, in Russia, in China. So we see a, a way out of, of this crisis. So while it's a severe crisis for nature, there's also enormous opportunities to get it right if you just start acting. Absolutely, yes. Uh, that's so true. And I, I think that, you know, you hit the nail on the head because... Um, you know, a lot of the young people uh, we are, we've been working with have been literally, this is exactly what they've been describing, because in all of these different geographies, we're seeing tremendous depletion of natural resources, wildlife, biodiversity, and it's affecting the climate, uh, you know, habitats for, for all species, as well as, of course, um, access to resources. Um, and, and I think that's been one of the major driving forces in propelling this conversation. And I really appreciate the examples that you flagged because we're seeing this um, you know, across so many different countries. And of course, with the polar bears, we know, even with the extent of marine destruction, uh, you know, uh, their food and, and everything has been affected. So survival is very difficult given so many different things, but thank you. I, I was wondering also- I, I, I can give you a couple of other examples and sure. you can use them or you can yes. just uh, not, not use Please. them if, if, if you don't want. No, no, uh, I do, a, 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 a shining example as to what you need to do, in my view is Rwanda, a small African nation, very poor, uh, through the worst genocide in human history. 
that now the number of gorillas is rapidly increasing in Rwanda. Why is that? Because they have found a way to mobilize the local people for the gorillas. They created an economy where people pay a lot to see the gorillas, and that money is used to create jobs for taxi drivers, hotel waiters, tourist guides, so many other people. So if you go there and try to kill a gorilla, I tell you, all the people will kill you. <laughs> they will attack you because that's the life and bread uh, comes from the gorilla. And I think this is really what, what you need to do because you need you, you cannot work against the people living in the uh, in the hotspots. You m- must w- work with them. Another brilliant example is uh, a company called April. It's the biggest paper and pulp company in the world. They made a huge conservation area in the uh, Indonesian um, island of Sumatra where they conserve one square meter of rainforest for every square meter of rainforest which they have been used for plantations. And the areas protected by the private companies like uh, April is much better protected than areas protected by the government, simply because they have the fire brigade to put out any fire, that the helicopters to patrol it if anything goes wrong. They have all the means and the economy to protect these in a beautiful, fantastic way. So we need to mobilize people and we need to mobilize business. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, and I love those examples. Uh, you know, I think you've already uh, sort of initiated the, the whole discussion about solutions. And I would love to hear, you know, as, as we mobilize citizens and we mobilize businesses, do, do you foresee a role for youth among those citizens in particular as being pivotal in, in influencing change? Uh, you know, is that your perspective? I think this is the question I most often get for young, from young people. Does it matter what I do? Can I really change the world? And my answer is the same always. Yes, who else? No one else will change the world for you. You must start and others will follow. And the biggest movement in human history happened exactly like that. But just point to one. Uh, in the 1950s, uh, black people in America could not go to the same restaurants, the same schools. They could not sit in the same buses as white people. They were discriminated in every single way. Some of them went to India to be inspired by Mahatma Gandhi, Gandhiji, uh, in the nonviolent struggle. And then they picked up the struggle. They were very, very young. They were teenagers. The, the old ones were in the early 20s. And the really, really, really old man, Martin Luther King, was uh, in his late 20s. Martin Luther, was King, Martin Luther King was killed when he was 38. And people saw him as an old, really, really old, old man. And they changed America and the world forever. While there's still problems with racism, we'll never ever come back to the evil situation in America in the 50s and 60s with this complete racial segregation and discrimination. It was young people who picked the fight. But turn to the situation today, I'm really inspired with what I see in India. There are so many inspiring examples of young people. I just read about the seven-year-old Pradeshi Singh from uh, from T- Tamil Nadu. Uh, uh, seven years old, has planted 13,000 trees. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah, those are really. Stunning. Are you are you there? Oh, oh sorry, you, you, you sorry. disappear. So I, I was not sure. It, no, no. It, it, yeah. I mean, thirteen thousand trees when you are seven years old. It's amazing and it's inspiring others. A uh, uh, fourteen-year-old in Tamil Nadu, Vinisha Omashankar, she has invented an alternative, a solar alternative uh, to uh, heating uh, by charcoal. Again, hugely inventive, very young. Move on to the state of Maharashtra, where uh, uh, Afra Shah, a young lawyer, started the greatest beach cleanup in human history. He just one day was so tired of the pollution, the enormous plastic on the beach, and he went down and started pulling and pulling and pulling plastic and cleaning up the beach. And then there were two, then there were hundreds, then there were thousands, and then there were hundreds of thousands of people, no exaggeration at all, cleaning beaches in Mumbai and Maharashtra, inspired the, the initiative of this one man. So never, ever underestimate the power of you taking the lead and doing something. Wow. 
That's really inspirational. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, I, I just wanted to say that, you know, um, as we uh, will witness uh, during the session, when we'll have this opportunity to present this beautiful video you've so kindly offered to share with us, um, would there be any um, specific pointer that you want to give uh, young people as they get out and start to, you know, take action inspired by your voice to, um, to implement solutions, uh, both blue and green uh, for the ecosystem. Is there any final message you'd like to share? Thank you. If you want to take action from Mother Earth, you should tap into your own inner feeling uh, for nature. Look to what you consider the most beautiful, amazing place maybe in the place where you grow up, grow up or in a neighborhood today or some place you have visited uh, in your country or, or somewhere else, uh, look into what you consider the most amazing sacred uh, nature and mobilize your inner feeling for that. And then you will have any number of strengths to go out and find the solutions to the problems. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been absolutely incredible. I really appreciate it. So you can, pick, you can pick some of these, what you need and what you don't yeah. need. You just throw into the... Dustbin. No, no, no. We love what you said. It's absolutely beautiful. And um, I love the examples and the, the message. I think that this is really something for young people to more, now more than ever really uh, uh, you know, listen to and be inspired by. In fact, we'd like very much to share this video on more than one occasion. Uh, but certainly during this session, and I look forward to keeping you posted because we're, we're expecting a lot of young people from different parts of the world. There'll be people from Latin America, from Europe, from Africa, from Asia. Uh, so it's got a lot of geographic, uh, you know, sort of distribution in terms of youth from different parts of the world. And I think that your messages and examples are hugely inspiring. So, and I think that this is exactly what people need to hear. So this has been terrific and I can't thank you. And whatever you drink uh, and you know, you may think that your message may or may not be powerful. Let me assure you, it's absolutely fantastic. Eric, I can't thank you enough, my friend. Okay, th thanks so much, Archie. Um, this you. is great. Um, and I'm looking forward to the report from the festival also. I'm absolutely. Sure yeah. I look forward. Thanks very much. Thanks very much to Dr. Ash and uh, Dr. Exxon. That was so powerful and uh, we've uh, had a lot of things. I think you've gotten one or two things just from him, what he, what he was saying. Uh, so uh, this time, uh, I don't know if there's any question, maybe there's anyone from the audience, they have uh, any question, maybe you want to find out something or any qualification or any addition. Yeah, is there anyone with a question or any qualification or you want to add something from the video? Thank, I think uh, we don't have any questions. Um, okay. There is a message by His Excellency Lawrence Conzi in the chat. I'm sure you must have read it. Um, yes. So thank you so much, uh, Susanna, Joanna, Levy, uh, Miss Chinlan, if she's still on the call. Uh, Dr. Eric Solheim and His Excellency Loris Gonzi, all of you uh, for joining us today. Uh, Dr. Ash is there if, if he wants to say something before we close the session. Uh, if we can uh, switch on our cameras and take a group photograph before we end the session. Okay. So, okay, someone is coming. Tell them. Thank you. Thank you for switching on the camera. Shelly, would you like to switch on your camera? <laughs> oh.
Okay, I'll, I'll take the photograph. Okay, Dr. Ash is there. Hey, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. perfect. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Ash. And thank you all of you. Thank you for joining us today.